G'day folks, with this little uh, equipment tear down quickie I figured I'd give you a bit of a look at a couple of different injectors of diesel engines. One of them is a conventional mechanical injector, the other one is an electronically triggered common rail injector. And uh, they're quite interesting, they work on a similar principle but they're, the common rail one's certainly a lot more complicated. It has more parts, it's triggered by an electronic solenoid, whereas this one here is triggered purely by a rise in fuel pressure. This one can spray multiple times during a cycle, this one only once. So yeah, common rail has huge advantages in power and fuel economy and all that sort of thing. Uh, these ones here have an advantage in simplicity and cost of manufacture. This injector was about $1,500 from Hyundai. Uh, this one here would probably be about $150, $200. So a bit of a difference. And that's a complete one. This is off an Isuzu truck. Uh, and this one here is off my friend and manager, uh, Terry. He has a Hyundai Terracan, which has gone through a few of these. And a couple of pumps, thanks to a uh, bad check valve on the fuel system. It's ingested debris. Uh, could have also been due... The first pump's probably due to old age, but the second one, there was a check valve or something that failed, and it started sucking up unmetered fuel. Or, sorry, not unmetered, but... Um, unfiltered fuel and putting it through the injectors destroying the spill return valve and the uh, seat itself and also destroyed or damaged the pump. The car's running fine now, it's after a couple of grand worth of new stuff but yeah, not cheap. This sort of thing, pretty resilient. You could feed it any kind of fuel you want and it would pretty much work. This not so much. Much more delicate parts, much higher pressure, 22 to or 20 to 30,000 psi injection pressure. This one here, just a couple of thousand psi. So I would not run waste veggie oil or anything like that in a common rail system, but the old systems like this don't seem to care. As long as you filter it before it gets to the mechanical pump, obviously you can still wear the pump out. These are much more resilient. So anyway, I'll uh, give you a bit of a close-up of some of the parts and also put the uh, nozzle under the microscope because this one here sprays out in a fan pattern of six jets. This one here is a pintle type injector and it has one tiny little hole in it and one little needle. So let's start with the mechanical one. Okay, so the mechanical injector works off fuel pressure just like the uh, electronic one. But you have this spring holding the needle down onto the seat. The seat's down in there. Now, when the pressure rises in the fuel rail, it pushes against that little tapered surface there and shoves this up inside the body of the injector, opening the hole in the pintle so it squirts fuel out. Um, there's not much more to it than that. The spill is fuel that blows past the needle and helps remove heat from the assembly and lubricate it. And it comes out here through the top of the cap and the uh, tensioning uh, nut. Just goes out through there and that's why you've got little spill lines coming off each injector or return lines, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so yeah, you've got the plunger, you've got a spring, you've got a needle, a pintle which has its little tapered seat and those little holes down the sides there are where the fuel goes through, pushes up against that and when it reaches critical pressure it goes pink and pops back up. As the pressure drops in the line it um, reseats so you get a controlled release. One release per cycle and that's it. And that's a retaining nut. Holds the whole lot together. Well at that end anyway, this nut holds the um, the plunger, the spring, the shim and all that stuff together. That is held on by the uh, this collar here. Just like that. So that's the bottom of the body. That's where the high pressure fuel comes in from here. Rail, uh, line screws on high pressure fuel in here. It goes around to those little holes there which are blocked with dirt and rust. This isn't a new, new injector. And uh, it acts against this little piston which has to go in before that goes on obviously. But yeah, you've got your little plunger. Goes down inside. You've got a spring, a shim and then cap goes on. And you can adjust the preload. You can adjust the breakout point by tightening or loosening this off. Uh, really simple, really simple to manufacture. There are a few precision ground parts in it, but 
overall they're a lot cheaper than common rail injectors they're just a lot cruder this squirts fuel out like a fire hose does this one is more like a perfume atomizer obviously 10 times the pressure you're going to get a finer spray especially through multiple nozzles instead of just one um, common rail systems unless you're in really cold climates like really really cold like negative 20 degrees you generally don't have any trouble starting them these can be a bit of a pain in the butt to start and you obviously have to use glow plugs on both of them but where I am my ML270 really doesn't need glow plugs you shouldn't need glow plugs on a common rail in Australia unless you're living up on one of the big mountains in the snowy area then you might have a stubborn start once in a while but the atomization and the compression and everything like that makes it so much easier to ignite because remember diesel is compression ignition there is no spark plug uh, I've already done it, I think I've done a video on how diesel works a while ago but there's plenty out there anyway there's also better explanations on how these work but I just figured I'd give you what I know now common rail uh, a lot more expensive as I said these are about 1500 each from Hyundai or about 250 if you know where to look online um, I think the last set came through AliExpress but they were still made in France or Belgium or somewhere like that uh, they're OEM parts but Hyundai just charge a fortune for them so you've got the main body of the injector fuel attaches to the top just like that fitting there so you've got 20,000 psi or so going in here down diagonally through a tiny little passage and out through I think it's the center hole there one of these holes here there's two dowel pins at the outer edges there's two there and that one there has a little bleed point that actually goes around the cap so I don't know what that one's for but one of these is main pressure and one of them's bleed pressure that goes back into this chamber and uh, helps cool down the electromagnetic coil that's an electromagnet that is the pilot valve so you've got a tiny little pilot valve on there that is the pilot valve body that is I think a secondary stage that, yeah that's a secondary stage that connects to the uh, needle itself or the nozzle and the needle itself fits down inside there so at standstill when it's not receiving a signal most of these stages are under full line pressure and when the needle well, sorry, when a signal sent to the magnet, it pulls or pu pushes or pulls, should pull this up. And this tiny little check valve creates a pressure differential somewhere in here. And that pressure differential means fluid wants to go past. And obviously it goes past the needle, the needle moves up, and you get a tiny little spray out through the end of it. And it can do that several times on each cycle. Super atomizing, really high pressure. Diesel's not the thinnest of fuels, which is why you need so much pressure to get a uh, fine vapour, but it works very well. So, yeah, these springs, I think that one there, that's the needle spring. That goes down in there. So you do still have a spring holding it shut, but when the coil is not energised, you've still got 20,000 plus PSI holding that shut as well, until you get a pulse through the... Um, the pilot line and it pilots the it pilots pressure on this side of the needle to the spill line so naturally the rest of the fuel wants to follow it so it's got to push the needle up and dispense some of itself at the same time uh, it's a really neat way of doing it so as soon as you get coil pilot fuel pressure wants to go from this side to this side out through the little spill line some of it's still going to go through the nozzle and that's where it meters it and can pulse several times a cycle uh, it'll give you a short pulse towards top dead center to start the fire in the combustion chamber in the swirl chamber and then it will pulse several times as the piston passes top dead center and then continues down the bore i believe somebody said up to five times in a cycle so that's really neat it can optimize the burn give you a nice clean lean burn um, obviously not too lean or you burn your turbo up but oh, sorry no I believe rich is worse for diesels because you get too too much heat too much flame lean's not so bad lean's bad on a petrol engine that's for sure 
but yeah, diesels, I'm not 100% sure on the, the issues with leanness. I know rich means flame grilling your turbocharger. But yeah, the, the ECU on these things is really smart. You have to program one of these numbers into it to tell the ECU what this injector's flow rate is and then it can balance it against the other ones. Each injector can have a completely different flow rate. You don't have to balance and fine tune them mechanically. Um, but the ECU needs to know exactly how much each one meters out per minute. And then it can do the math and work out how much to spray into each cylinder. Assuming each cylinder is healthy, if you've got a lame cylinder, it's not going to help. It's still going to run like a dog, possibly even throw a check engine light or go into limp mode. But yeah, I'll get some of these parts under the scope. Now, I've got no idea what this engine, uh, what engine this piston's off, but this is a swirl chamber. Uh, where's the tip? It'll be positioned in the head up, up above and it sprays fuel down into that chamber which is full of highly compressed, very hot air. It'll start a fire. Then as the piston reaches top dead centre it'll start to give another spray and as it goes down it'll just keep fueling the fire and the computer will monitor the exhaust gas output to uh, work out if it's too rich or too lean and it'll uh, correct it accordingly. But yeah, don't know what that's off. I've used it as a mixing tray for epoxy by the looks of it but they're handy to have around. So yeah, that's a diesel piston. Lots of compression rings too, look at that. And even one below the gudgeon pin or wrist pin. Serious stuff. Can't remember what the common rail inject um, diesel uh, compression ratio is. I believe it's lower than uh, pre-combustion or direct mechanical direct injection but it's still pretty significant. It's like 18 to 1 compression ratio and there's very little area around here. Like there's no margin for error. The valves are recessed into the head perfectly. They're timed perfectly and this area here is almost touching the head when the piston's at top dead center so you've only got that little area there full of compressed air. Everything else is just nothing. The head's perfectly flat. So you can imagine compressing a full bore full of air all the way down into there, then squirting fuel into it when it's super heated. And that's also what helps create a bit of diesel knock. Somebody asked me that a little while ago, why do diesels knock like that? Well, it's because you're basically detonating the fuel. There's no spark plug to give you a controlled ignition point or anything like that, a gradual ignition, like on a petrol engine, it's detonating the fuel. And uh, it's one of the reasons why they knock so much. You do get a bit of a tic-tac from the um, injectors and things sometimes. They make a bit of a thunk sound as they fire off, especially the big ones. This, these ones here make a nice little thunk, thunk, thunk sound as they go. And, uh, yeah, common rail ones shouldn't make much noise, if any at all, but, yeah. Anyway, rambling on again. <laughs> now, there's a good example of a uh, precision ground surface. It looks like crap, but that's as silky smooth as you can imagine. It's the uh, one of the making surfaces of, I think that's the second stage, the spill side of it or something, pilot side. Um, yeah, it's very smooth. The other side's not much different. Let's see all the dust and stuff that I've got on it since I've had it apart. My workshop is not ideal for working on injectors. Not that it's going back together again. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, you wouldn't work on injectors that you care about in my shop. <laughs> or if you did, you'd do it very carefully. And don't just leave the bits out on the table. Now that, hopefully, you get a good shot down the... Uh, Tip of this thing, this is the nozzle. There we go. You can see the little holes. Two, four, six. Yeah, six holes and uh, a very controlled spray pattern. Awesome stuff. Laser engraving on them. Try and get a better shot of that. There we go. Some of the dots on a laser etched QR code on the side of the uh, second stage module. That's really neat.
as you just see the burns and the pearlescent metal where it's burnt it. That's uh, you know, laser engraved. I'll see if I can get a bit of text. Yeah, there we go. You can see where they started and stopped the laser. The one stopped there. Yeah. Laser engraving up very, very close. And then the QR code next to it. <laughs> Yeah, a bit of glare from the light, but that's what makes up the QR code on it. Pretty neat. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. The quick little look at a uh, couple of diesel injectors and my take on or what I know about how they work. Uh, they're quite interesting, yet pretty straightforward principle. This one's a little more complicated because of the electronic operated pilot valve. That one there is purely pressure differential between the spring, the injection pressure and the um, absence of pressure or just na um, ambient pressure on the uh, spill line. And yeah, in both of them spill fuel, return fuel acts as a lubricant and a heat uh, exchanger, coolant. And uh, yeah, they make diesel engines work. They've been, the concept's been around for well over a hundred years I guess long time. They've changed throughout the years but they're still around. I don't know if Rudolf Diesel had these in mind when he invented the diesel engine but I'm sure if he was around today he'd be quite impressed with how much power and uh, efficiency that we got out of them because that was where he was going with the diesel engine. He could see that steam was only a few percent efficient. The gas engine was not much better. Oil and um, petrol engines weren't much better. Um, yeah, the diesel engine was uh, something different, particularly get, getting away from, uh, I shouldn't say the oil engine, he started with the oil engine, but um, propane driven stationary engines and things and uh, steam engines certainly weren't all that particularly uh, efficient, but yeah, once you start going down the road of uh, diesel fuels and heavy oils, yeah, it works and they're efficient, they're torquey, a lot more torque than a petrol engine. Yeah, my uh, ML270 puts out 400 Newton meters in its uh, original form. This one, it's obviously a bit worn. The injectors have a little bit of leak by at the tips, a little bit of white smoke at idle. Eventually I'll get them reconditioned or replaced, but it still keeps on working. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more. There we go, I had to try it. Red LED inside the nozzle. <laughs> connected to a CMOS battery and that's it. Pretty straightforward. At least it shows the holes are still clear and not full of crap. <laughs>